Ah yes, the Jeep Cherokee. An extravagant sound experience. With all the highway noise and rattling and squeaking, it's kind of amazing you hear any music at all. So today, we're going to see how good a Craigslist subwoofer sounds. No, not that kind of subwoofer. Now right off the bat, I don't know crap about audio systems, so let's see how well this uh, goes for the Everman man that isn't a audiophile bass head. I like my music, but I couldn't tell you anything about RMS or, you know, speaker ohms and cone sizes and things like that. So, what we got here is a Bose Rick Rouse amplifier, I think, right? All right, that's what this thing does. Uh, it runs the subwoofer, that's all I really know. You plug your speaker in, you plug your power and remote in, and then on the other side, you plug your radio in, and you set all your settings. So, right off the bat, I got this kit for 100 bucks with everything. It's, it's 1100 watts, but it's only, I think, 250 watt RMS, and I forget what it said about, uh, this speaker ohms, but whatever it is, it, it works for the subwoofer that I have. So, this came with our little bass controller. We've got RCA cables, and we got a fused connection for battery positive, so I'll just have to make a ground. And then here's the sub itself. Fancy. Nice hard wood. It's got some hella gravity to it. This is a an 8-inch Infinity sub. Something or other, RMS or whatever, I, I don't know. And I think it's a 2 ohm or whatever. Whatever it is, they, they work with each other. So this is a fully enclosed uh, box, I guess. But yeah, it's a sub. So <laughs> I'm going to hook it up and see what it sounds like. Okay, so in order to hook all this business up, we're going to have to uh, pull the head unit and plug in our RCA. That's going to be the first thing. And I'm probably going to leave this stuff just laying around for now and just plug it in and see what it sounds like. So I guess we'll start with the radio. Okay, so the first step for me, um, <laughs> whoever put this head unit in originally uh, cut out the uh, the panel on the outside so that they could get this to fit. You've got a couple screws you got to remove. One, two, uh, three is under here, and four is under here. And it's a real pain in the ass to get this thing out, but basically you want to work it up the column and then slide the top out first and then pull. A little bit of bending involved. It's a little sketchy. Better hope that your plastic's not brittle because there's a decent chance you might snap the thing. But anyway, this is how this thing actually comes out. It's a real pain, but you just keep working it forward until you can tilt this top half out and not break it. It's not fun, I'll tell you that much. Okay, so eventually you get here. So once you can work this side up out of the top, then you can take it off. There we go. Bit of a pain, but it's possible. All right, for me, I think I'm gonna have to room, remove my clock because it's in the way. So that's two more screws here, another screw at the top. Okay, so I was able to move the clock out of the way a little bit and get her free. So now you can see my beautiful tech jobs right there. <laughs> I literally just welded the factory one, which had that big lip on the top, and these two ears. I just put it on the, uh, the factory one. Cool. Well, there's the RCA outputs that we're after. So we can just plug that in there. We should be good. Okay, so the way I'm going to do it, the light blue is going to be our white, and our black one's going to be our red. Okay, so we got that running in there. We'll get our bullet connectors hooked up for the sub itself. So now we get to worry about our power cables. Now luckily, we have a positive cable, it's pre-made, and it has the connector that we need. This guy just slides right in there, but we didn't get a ground wire, so I'm going to have to make one. So I just got this eyelet connector, and I just chopped off the sides, so it fits in there. Like shoe. All right, it all hooked up. So I think that'll do it. 
this little guy over here gets the, um, the little telephone jack in the front. So, I don't know. The remote connection. I wasn't quite sure what that meant at first, but now I understand. It actually comes from the radio. Uh, so the radio should have an output signal. So basically when the ignition turns the radio on, the radio sends out its own signal to turn other things on. So the radio will tell this to turn on so it's not running all the time. Makes sense. I think it just needs 12 volts, so you could just jump it and give it some power just to test. Uh, I looked up the owner manual for this, JV, uh, this JVC head unit, and my, my remote terminal is uh, blue with a white stripe or something like that. So we'll see if there's one in there. Okay, I think that should do it. So I'm just going to jump a little alligator clip onto there, and our unit should be on now. And so it is. That looks like a power light to me. Cool. So now I guess if we turn the radio on, we should actually get something out of it, right? Hey, look at that. It actually moves. Cool. I guess I did something right. I'm just playing with the controls, but we know it works. Okay, well, the test works, so everything seems to function, and it makes noise. So I'm going to figure out where I want to put this amp so that I can figure out where to run the RCA cables and figure out all that crap, because you're supposed to run the cables on a different side than the power. And yeah. Okay, so now we have to decide on where the heck we want to put it. Now, I got a lot of crap in this Jeep. I've got tools, I've got fluids, i got spare parts, i got recovery equipment, everything you could think of. So there's not a whole lot of room back here. So I think my sub is just going to have to rest here. So I think that'll work. Um, the wires aren't very long on these. It'd be easy enough to extend them if I have to. So I could either bootleggedly just leave the amp right here and call it a day. Or maybe mount it under the seat. The only big downfall with mounting it under the seat is if you ever take water on, that's the first thing to get soaked and destroyed. So that would kind of just suck. After that is running wires. The wires that I have here are flexible and long enough. I should be able to put them just about anywhere. I'll figure something out. So obviously, we need to get our positive signal over here. But I'm going to see if I can run it like this. So we're going to go through one of the holes over here which you probably can't see. Gonna go to that one, or maybe that one if I have to. We're gonna run it down the passenger, and then our exit point's gonna be right here. I'm gonna run it under the seat to the amp over there. And hopefully that gives me enough room. It's gonna be tight, but we'll see. All right, I don't wanna hear anybody say that they can't fit stuff in their grommet. All right, look at all the stuff I got going in here. You can get it to fit, just give her a good jam. Okay, so now we got our wire tucked up. I actually have it wrapped around this bar and around the hood release cable. And it goes overneath, or it goes over the steering column. So it goes over there and then over top all this. So make sure that you're not hitting your pedal or anything like that. So now we get the fun part of taking out all our Phillips screws for this trim panel so we can run our wire over to the back. Got a tight space? You one of these guys. It's a little uh, right angle dealio so you can slip it in there and actually loosen the fucking thing up. Pain in the ass. So you can peel this back, just pull it up and you can take the whole thing off. Screws all the way back. I have the wire running low so that they don't get caught by these screw holes. You don't want to drill through that because that would suck. Button that back up. Okay, I think that's the power cable. Come back here. And roll it in. Hell yeah, just enough room. Sweet. Okay, so we'll have to make our own ground wire and find a suitable grounding location. Probably one of these seatbelt bolts back here. That looks like a pretty nice ground. So I have to clean it up real good. And then we got to run a sense wire to the radio, so that'll be just some kind of a wire, I think 18 to 14 gauge. It's, it's just a sensing wire, it's, it's not really running any current. So we got to run a wire from there to the radio, along with RCE. Okay, so next up we need that sense wire. So, got some old ass wire here, 100 foot of 18 gauge, and it's red, so, you know, people will know not to poke it with their poking bit. So, uh, yeah, that should be good enough for what we need. 
I'll have to run the subwoofer base knob somewhere too. Oog. Okay, so we got our head unit out. Now the wire that we're interested for, like I said before, for me, it is a blue wire with a white stripe. And on the other side of the harness, that connects to this gray wire. This one right here. So following this harness, it's pretty friggin' stupid. Okay, so check this out, right? We go into here, down the right side of the hatch. And it probably won't focus, but it goes down, right? And then it's under here. Okay, so the harness goes there, and it goes this way, right? Underneath the heater control, and then comes back up over here. What in the fudge are you doing, Jeep? So instead of having a harness, right, that goes from here to there, they're gonna go down and around the heater control. Like, wh why? And, and then from that, it splits up over the top to that way. Like, bruh, what are you doing? But our gray wire is right there. I want to see where that goes. It's for the power antenna. Let's see if I can track it down. Okay, gray wire goes up here now. And back here. Bingo. Okay. Let's see if we can get you in here. So, we can see our wires right now. No shadows, please. Okay. So, they go there. And then they come over here. See that? And then this guy branches off of that to this connector right here, yeah. And then there's other stuff that goes to the TCU and other shit, but here's a gray wire. So if you've ever wondered what this is, this is probably for the power antenna. Schnifty. So we could just cut this wire here off and then just run it down. Sweet. And you know what we say about assumptions. Makes an ass out of you and me, so. Plug in the schwan. And two. Hey. Very in like Flynn, baby. Excellent. Yeah. All right, so we get nine volts from gray to black. So that'll work. Snip it and run a wire. Oh my god. So, you want yourself a pro tip? Fuck all this stuff down here. There's not enough room between this right here and whatever's behind it. I don't even know how they got the factory wires through there, dude. There's, you can't, you can't do it. I don't know if you'd be able to get an adapter like this halfway through. It's a pain in the ass just trying to run this little metal thing. You can't, there's no room. It, no, it's not working. Not unless, uh, it's just, no. So, here's a trick. Just lift up your cow a little bit. Or whatever the fuck this thing is. <laughs> I have a nice little access hole in here. I feel like that might have been previous owner stuff because there was RCA back here at one point. Somewhere. I don't know where. But yeah, you take these screws out. You got to screw down. Screw down. On. Da, do, and three. Somewhere over there. Uh, I was able to get up just enough and slide the uh, little RCA down there. So now hopefully I can run this somewhere nice and out of the way I don't have to see exactly where I can send the wire but I, I, I don't think you can take this thing out I, I took these screws out and it's just the black it's the gray cover panel there's nothing what the fuck man you can tell this jeep was made to be fucking built for surround systems and whatever Urgh. okay anyway now that we got a freaking access hole in there let's see if we can Okay, so I think we can work with that. So you can't see it anymore, but you just take the wire, tuck it up under back, back behind here, run it around all these little finger dingers, and then just take this screw out so that you can move this back just far enough to get the wire in between that gap. You can still see it. So if I can push it in far enough, I want it to be behind this panel, but I don't know if that's going to happen or not. I'm fine with just having it in there. I really don't care at this point. Fuck this thing. Jesus. Okay, so we got that blue wire ran all the way down to the back. Looking good. Cool. Now I'm going to run that red wire to this gray wire down here so that we can get our power signal to the radio. And I think we can uh, 
finish up the radio business as well. Okay, so we got our we got our RCA plugged in. So I got blue to white and black to red. Everything else is hooked up and should be okay. So we have fuck. R.I.P. We will slide it in and uh, bolt it back up. Okay, now for the fun part, doing a little bit of soldering action. So we're gonna clip our gray wire, make sure the ignition is off so that we uh, aren't messing with hot wires. And we're going to splice in our red bread over here and run that to the back. Uh, I also ran the um, that telephone cord for the base control. This little guy right here. So I'm gonna squeeze that right in there between my CB and I think it'll look nice. Okay, clip, strip, and sort of. She's looking good. Marshmallow time. Ooh. It's only a little hot. Okay, cool. Heat trunk, ready to go. Now we can run this back and we're almost done. Want to give yourselves a, a little bit of a professional look to your install? Take a little bit of electrical tape and run it every, I don't know, foot or so. And what it does is it holds the wires together and just makes the install a whole lot cleaner and easier to work with, too. All right, so this is everything. So we can finally jam them all underneath there, run them to the back, and put all these screws back in. All right, would you look at that? It's all buttoned up. Up to here, I just put a, uh, a little ring end on that so we can screw that into the back. Right into here for the remote line. And uh, we're basically done. All I gotta do is find myself a nice uh, beefy wire for the ground uh, and put some lugs on either end. And then bolt that to the bottom of the seat. And then we can hook the positive up to the battery and be done. Ain't that cool. And daylight. So we got all our wires run except for the ground. And this is a leftover ground that I had that I made a while ago. So this is actually 4 gauge. This will be nice and beefy. It's not the most flexible, but it should get the job done. So we're just going to uh, cut it so that it fits onto this terminal and then find a good bolt nearby. Hoping for one of the uh, steering or er, one of the seat bolts. Either something like this guy might make a good one. That one's probably too far away, so it's probably going to be this guy. This is a bitch to get out if you haven't taken them out before. I believe it's a Torx uh, T55. They're in there pretty good. You only want to take that out once. Okay, so I just had to drill that end out a little bit for it to fit. It's not going to fit around the whole bolt shank, because otherwise I don't think there's going to be much left. But it does actually get a connection there. This is a really good uh, ground reference point, so I just checked from here to there. And it seemed pretty good. It was only 0.2 ohms of resistance, so seems like it's good enough for me. All right, I guess we'll put it in there and hook it up to the ERP. She's all mounted up, so I think we can call that a done deal. So we'll try and bend this to where it wants to sit and uh, put it in its final little resting place. Hooray! Okay, so for semi-secure amp mounting, I'm thinking about maybe using some Velcro or, you know, I don't know if I want to put screws through the panel here, but just something to keep it from shaking around all the time. But that's pretty much the final install. Okay, final step, hook up that good old base knob. So I think that mine's going to sit pretty well around a knot area, somewhere like that. But we'll Velcro there, and she's golden. Okay, so final step is to make sure that the uh, power cable is routed somewhat nicely and connected to the positive. So, if everything works, we should have buffer now. Okay, ignition is on, nothing blew up yet. And, oh yeah baby, we got a green light. Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah. Put on some teens, eh? Oh, yeah. 
That sounds good. I like that. It gives it just a little bit of the deep. I don't need like windows pounding out, blowing up. I just, mmm, those deep notes, baby. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. All right. Sweet. Well, I'll play with the uh, settings uh, as I go along and see if I like anything different than what it's set at now. So right now we have our gain. Our bass boost gain is up. Uh, I don't know what the frequency pass is at, but it is at the frequency pass, not the full range. And we're on the higher sensitivity. I think for tuning it, you're supposed to turn the system up to like three quarters and then turn the sub up as loud as you can get without distortion and then you're at a safe reading or something like that but yeah we're basically done now it's just the playing with part but oh my god it works yay oh that's so cool i'm, oh, I'm souped oh yes Alright, so I've gotten used this thing for a couple weeks, and holy crap, it is a lot of fun having a sub. <laughs> it really brings a different experience to music. You start to enjoy things that sometimes you normally wouldn't notice. You notice a lot of the bass, like, obviously it sounds kind of dumb, but I was listening to some jazz and you could actually hear, like, the bass player play. It was a little strange. It sounded like he was right next to you. But the location is really nice, because it, like, bounces off the roof, and it just, you, you hear it really well up front. The, uh, Velcro didn't quite hold so that kind of sucks but oh well so after playing with this for a little bit i found that the uh, bass boost um, makes the signal not very clean so in order to have the best sounding music i had to turn that off and then turn the level all the way up sensitivity has to be up just for it to pick up and i do have it on the uh, low pass mode but it's turned almost all the way up it's i think it is all the way up at this point <laughs> Uh, the bass knob is usually all the way up, and on the radio, that's also the subwoofers all the way up. So this thing is cranked up to max. And, you know, at mid-level, if you're just in a parking lot or something, it sounds great. It really does sound good when you're, you know, sitting still. But, like, when you're on the highway, it has to compete a little bit, so you start to lose it once you go to the higher levels. So for just cruising and a little bit of bass, yeah, this is nice. Is it going to be enough for you if you like to turn up the volume? No. Already, after hearing some good bass songs, it's like, ah, oh, I want to go bigger now. It feels good, but I want more. So, yeah, this was uh, very eye-opening. It's, it's very interesting. Some songs, this sounds absolutely fantastic. Sometimes i got to turn it down a little bit because it's just weird. But, you know, a little tuning here and there probably wouldn't hurt. But overall, I'm happy with it. You know, it's like a performance mod. All you want to do is go faster. So yeah, hope you enjoyed. I sure do.